morning, scholars, and happy Monday. I hope you had an amazing and restful weekend, and you're ready for an amazing week of e-learning. I know we're going to do a lot of reading, and you're going to be working really hard in your guided reading calls, as well as your Zern and your Lexia. I know we're going to have an awesome week here, learning about a completely new author. So you have to stick around so you can find out who the new author is for the week. You ready? Let's go check it out. Let's find out who our author of the week is. Drum roll. Her name is Lois Alert. Say Lois Alert. Yes, Lois Alert. Let's see who she is and a couple facts about her before we get introduced to our story today. Here is Lois Alert. Say hello, Lois. I love all the colors in her background. That is something we're going to see in a lot of her books is all the beautiful colors that she uses. Here's a couple facts about Lois. First, she is another author that is an author and an illustrator, which means she writes the stories and she draws the pictures. And we'll talk about in a couple days what else she does other than draw pictures. She uses other things as well to make her pictures. So she's the author and the illustrator in her books. What's also really amazing about her is that she is 85 years old. Say, whoa. But she's still making new books today. So even though she's 85 years old, she is still writing books for you guys to be able to read. Talk about amazing. Another fact about her is that other than her writing her own books, because she's an illustrator, she can illustrate for other people as well. So there's a lot of books that she has not written, but she's illustrated for other people's books. And we're going to see a very popular book that she has illustrated, but she did not write. Let's see what that book is. Do you recognize a book that you've read before? I hope you have. Some of these books she has written, and some of these books she has only illustrated in. We're going to see which of these is her most popular books and the ones that she has only illustrated in or things that she's illustrated and written in. The first one that we all know is Chicka Chicka Boom Boom. She did not write this book, but she is the illustrator. So all of the artwork was Lois's. And we're going to see that a lot of her illustrations look really similar. So it's really obvious once we know Lois's art style to look at Chicka Chicka Boom Boom and say, oh, that is definitely Lois Alert's illustrations. And everyone knows Chicka Chicka Boom Boom. Will there be enough room? The next one is Color Zoo. This is the only book that Lois Alert has won an award for. It is Color Zoo, and she got the Caldecott Honor Award for it. And it is all about her using shapes, making zoo animals. This was a really fun book because she uses lots of different shapes. She uses cutouts, which we will talk about later this week, to make her pictures. Another very popular book that she does is called Snowballs. And we'll also talk about this later in the week because of how she uses her illustrations in this book. This is a book that a lot of people like to do in wintertime and make art projects with as well. It's a very fun story by Lois Alert. In today's story, scholars, we're going to see somebody feeling very proud of themselves. What does it mean, scholars, to feel proud? Yes, in the picture, there's a girl, and she is on the pedestal winning a medal. And it says, when you do a really good job and you feel really good about yourself. So I see in the picture that she won a medal, which means she must have won maybe first, second, or third place. And she was really proud of the really hard work that she did to earn that medal. I have a sentence as well to help us see the word proud in a sentence. My sentence is, I was proud of myself when I read the page with no mistakes. So I'm in my guided reading call, and I'm a little nervous to read. But then I read, and I made no mistakes, and I read everything perfectly. 
I was really proud of myself for how hard I worked with my reading and how I used all of my strategies to figure out the words on the page. So I was really proud of myself. So in our story today, one of our characters is going to feel very proud of themselves for something that they did. This is today's story, Planting a Rainbow by Lois Ehlert. Look at those amazing colors that are so bright that she uses. When we read this story, I want you to think about a couple things. What happened in the story? What happened in the beginning, the middle, and the end? Or sometimes we call it first, second, third, or first, next, then. We have so many different ways to describe it, but I want you to think about what events in the story happen to make up the whole entire story. The other thing I want you to do is think about why might the main character be proud at the end? Why might the main character be proud of themselves at the end? I hope you enjoyed the story Planting a Rainbow. It's one of my absolute favorites by Lois Ehlert. I'll see you in a few minutes when you are done watching the story. Planting a Rainbow by Lois Ehlert. Every year, Mom and I plant a rainbow. In the fall, we buy some bulbs and plant them in the ground. Orange tiger lily bulb, red tulip bulb, orange tulip bulb, yellow daffodil bulb, blue hyacinth bulb, purple crocus corn, and the purple bearded iris rhizome. We order seeds from catalogs and wait all winter long Phlox, morning glory, zinnia, aster, cornflower, marigold, and daisies. For spring to warm the soil and sprout the bulbs. Then it's time to go to the garden center to select some seedlings. We sow the seeds and set out the plants in soil. And watch the rainbow grow and grow and grow. We have some red flowers, tulips, carnations, rose, and orange flowers, tulip, zinnia, tiger lily, poppy, and some yellow blooms, daisy, marigold, daffodils. We grow something green, ferns, and some blue flowers, morning glories, delphinium, hyacinth, cornflowers, and some purple flowers too, crocus, phlox, iris, violets, asters, and pansies. All summer long we pick them and bring them home. Why would the main character be proud of themselves right now in the story? And when summer is over, we know we can grow our rainbow again next year. Welcome back. Did you enjoy the story painting a rainbow? That garden was so beautiful. The colors that they planted made that garden so beautiful and filled with color. It made me, as a reader, want to go to the store and buy some seeds so I could have a garden that colorful and that full of a rainbow. How did you feel about that? Did you think it would be a cool idea to have a beautiful, colorful rainbow just like that? I would love it. What did you like about the story today? I like that, too. I also liked how she labeled all of the flowers. So if I really liked a flower that she drew and illustrated, I could go to the store and get that exact same flower because she labeled it to let me know the name of the flowers. Can you tell me what happened first, second, and third in our story? Or we'd like to also call it beginning, middle, and end. What happened first? Awesome job. Next. Awesome, and last. You did that so well. Love it, super proud of you scholars. 
you told me that at the beginning they got the plants and the seeds and the bulbs. Then they planted them in the ground and watered them. And then the plants grew and grew and grew into flowers. What happened at the very end, after all of the flowers had bloomed and it was a beautiful garden of rainbow, what happened then? She picked some of them and brought them home. So then they have the beautiful colored rainbow, maybe in a vase on their kitchen counter, maybe a vase on their dining room table, something beautiful that they can look at with all of the very, very hard work that they did to make those rainbow flowers. I love it, scholars. I'm glad that you enjoyed how colorful and how bright and vibrant her illustrations were. Tomorrow, we're also going to read a book that's pretty similar. And I bet when you watch it, you're going to be able to see all of the similarities from today's book in tomorrow's book as well. Before you leave me, scholars, I have one thing I want you to do. Please click the link below and fill out what happened at the beginning, what happened in the middle, and what happened at the end of Painting a Rainbow. Have a wonderful rest of your day, scholars. I will see you here with me tomorrow. Goodbye, everybody.